we're here to make a new type of news. New insights, new styles, new topics every day. We are News Generation. Making news just for you. It's May 8th here in Seoul. I'm Shin Yun, and you're watching News Generation. Joining me in the studio is Chung Hee-san. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. And also, Im sang -hyo. Thanks for having me. All right. Now, both are here to speak on behalf of people in their 20s and 30s. Now, in Korea, May is the month when we celebrate our love for our families. And there are days designated to celebrate the different members. For instance, May 5th was Children's Day. And today, May 8th is Parents' Day. So take a look at the screen to find out more about how we celebrate Parents' Day here in South Korea. Every May 8th is Parents' Day in Korea to celebrate and show respect for one's parents. From a young age, Koreans are taught to give red carnations, letters, or gifts, expressing gratitude to their parents. At school, they even learn how to sing a special song for Parents' Day, which has the lyrics, What else under the sky is bigger than our parents' love? Their sacrifices are endless. Speaking on behalf of millennials and Gen Zers who are celebrating Parents' Day, I try giving my parents small amounts of cash to express my gratitude. Up until when I was in high school, I would buy them red carnations, but after I became a college student, I would either take them to a nice restaurant or give them cash gifts, which they seem to like mm. even more than the flowers I got them. So here at the studio, how about you two? How do you usually celebrate Parents' Day and what do you usually get your parents? Yes, so I've been a good son. Really to my now? Parents. We'll yes. have to ask. <laughs> okay, so I gave them the cash gift. The cash gift. Now, I'm pretty sure that you guys are all familiar with this, but there's like a tissue, like a box, and you put the 50,000 uh, ones in there and uh, you pull it out and the string of money just uh, comes out on and on and my parents really loved it so in the past i really, really had to like contemplate myself what to give uh, for mother and father on their birthday on or on like parents day but i realized that the cash gift is the most efficient and the most satisfactory gift uh, to both my mothers and father uh, so they really liked the gift mm -hmm. that i gave to them so i was really happy as well i also saw that on social media <laughs> it's like you take out a a box of tissues when instead of tissues it's money and i right. saw the reaction of parents and they seem to be very happy actually i want to have the gift myself <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to become mm. a parent first okay. i think <laughs> now what about you hasan how do you usually celebrate parents okay day? first of all happy parents day and congrats mom and dad if you're watching this show mm. you know it's really difficult to decide what to give to parents because they already have what they need and they can afford it much better than i can so sadly, I always fail to get them the right thing. But today, in a way, this morning, I sent them flowers, especially carnations, and mm. other gifts like healthcare products to show my gratitude. Also, today is my parents' 30th wedding anniversary, so I really had to do something meaningful. Currently, I'm living in Seoul, and my parents are in Busan. Technically, we are living far away from each other, so I'm planning to visit them this weekend which was supposed to be a surprise actually, but yeah. they're gonna know now. So I guess I'm gonna be the biggest gift for them. Aw, that's really nice. And congratulations to your parents' 30th anniversary. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to Hyesun's parents there. Now, in light of Parents' Day, we're gonna be talking about how we usually express our gratitude or vice versa, how they express their gratitude towards their children. So we're gonna be talking about cash gifts. Do you guys usually receive cash gifts from your parents or an allowance or vice versa? Do you give allowance or cash gifts to your parents. Yeah, so I give both my mother and father uh, 600,000 Korean won oh, every month. Wow. Uh, yes, yeah, so, and there's a two reasons for this. Uh, one is because currently I'm living with my parents <laughs> in my parents' house, and it's a bit embarrassing to say this because I'm a 30 year old, all grown up man, <laughs> but it's some kind of like a rental fee that I give them every month. So, uh, And the second reason is because I'm the type of a person who uh, tend to spend way much more than what I <laughs> earn for that month. So, and one day I realized that if I go on like this, uh, Sangyeok, you will get broke. <laughs> So I decided to uh, give some portion of my income to my mother and father uh, as a way to save my money. So I think it's an ad advantage for both of us. So I can save money and my parents will be happy because uh, they get a decent amount of money every month. Sangyeok, I'm actually quite surprised mm -hmm. to hear not only did you give them a cash gift like event where mm -hmm. you do the tissues, mm -hmm. but for you to give them a 600,000 <laughs> won, that's around like 500 something dollars. Right. 
every month to your parents, mm -hmm. that's really respectable. Yeah, because my mother gave the meals and wow. I don't have to pay the rental fees like my peers. So it's uh, some sort of expression of generosity to Still, my Still, that's, that's very plausible there. Now, what about you, Hezan? Well, I'm pretty embarrassed to say this mm. after Sangyuk especially, <laughs> but actually today was very exceptional occasion for me. Okay. Normally my parents support me financially instead of me giving them cash even though I have a job. They technically pay almost everything that's essential for me to live, such as my monthly rent, phone bill, insurance, and also public transport costs. And not only that, they sometimes buy me groceries and food too. I do handle some payments like apartment maintenance fees, but still, without my parents' support, I have no idea how I would survive by myself. Mm. And I am doing my best to be independent and to become a more responsible daughter so that I can <laughs> support them one day. But it's taking way more time than I expected right now. Exactly. Hezon, I don't want you to be too ashamed because you're not alone here. There is a growing number of millennials and Gen Zers who live with their parents or aren't financially independent yet and receive an allowance. In our previous episodes, we called them kangaroo tribes. They're like baby kangaroos living inside the pouches of their parents. But how common is this kangaroo tribe tradition or the fact that we still having a job and being young adults are living with our parents? Mm -hmm. Yes, luckily my case is not exceptional, rather mm. it's kind of common. Eight out of young, 10 young Koreans are economically relying on their parents these days. According to one piece of research, if you look at the screen, 77% of Koreans in their 20s and 30s stated that they were financially dependent on their parents just like me. Among these, 43% said that they live with their parents, while 41 mentioned receiving rent or allowance from their parents. Mm. An additional 7% said they live with their parents and receive pocket money at the same time. So definitely a lot of millennials and Gen Zers in Korea, just like me, are going through the same situation. Now, Sangyo, you might not be able to relate to those stats given that you do give your parents a monthly cash gift, but what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, so like you mentioned, I do give the cash gifts to my parents and allowances every month, but when I was attending college, mm -hmm. I to receive the allowance from oh, my yeah. parents. So, uh, uh, because, and like you mentioned, I think the biggest reason why the youth in their 20s and 30s are still living uh, with their parents is because they lack stable income uh, these days, especially for those who couldn't get a job. Uh, economic independence is way much more difficult. And if you analyze the, uh, response, uh, the survey response, most of them said that they usually leave, uh, leave their parents' nest after mm -hmm. uh, they get their job. So this shows that the youth are actually willing to become independent, but the social condition is not allowing them to do so. Mm -hmm. And currently, because we are experiencing economic downturn right. and because mm -hmm. the rental fees in Seoul and metropolitan area is just too high, uh, the youth have no choice but to live with their parents. I know, even though we do seem to be earning a stable amount of income, mm -hmm. it's not enough to be actually investing or right. expanding our assets, which is only the reason why we are relying on our parents, though societally it's not what we want because this trend seems to be quite the contrary to what we would expect in a conservative and heavily Confucius rooted society in Korea where it's tradition to think that it's up to the children to be taking care of their elderly. But now, as we're seeing more millennials and Gen Z earning a lot of allowance from their parents, I do think that there's a stark contrast, right? Right. So as you mentioned, Korea used to show uh, heavily uh, collective, mm -hmm. collective society and family structure uh, was really like living a big with a big fam number of family members in the past. So all family members lived together and even in the 70s and 80s, there were some uh, youth who gave all their income uh, to the mothers and fathers. And it was also considered a social norm to support your parents uh, once they retire. And parents at the time had the belief that their children will mm -hmm. also uh, give them the support once they grow old. Now, but recently the trend has definitely reversed and it's the children's side that uh, still re receiving the support uh, from the parents. Even the parents themselves no longer uh, depend on their children and rather struggle to come up with new ways to gather assets after they retire. And this changing trend uh, reflects our current society. Uh, like I've mentioned earlier, the millennials and Gen Zs are facing low economic growth and rising housing price and the income change has also 
come to a stalemate for a dec decade now. Mm. And with this trend, uh, it is, like you mentioned, difficult for the youth to gain their assets and invest in something else. And I think our parents understand that it's up to them to be uh, saving up mm -hmm. for their retirement as well. And I think it also has to do with an aging society. The right. longer we're living, the re we're realizing the longer we have to work, mm -hmm. we also have to save up more for after retirement. Now, Hezon, would you like to add on to this question on what your thoughts are as to seeing a stark contrast between what we would usually think in a Confucius society, children should be serving their parents, but vice versa, even for me too, I still financially rely on my parents. Mm. Yes, as Sang Yong mentioned, not only the culture aspect, economic backgrounds have also changed a lot, a lot mm. compared to the past. We, the young Koreans, are confronting so many economic difficulties nowadays as living in an era of low growth, low salaries, but at the same time, high interest rates, high rent. Even getting a job is another big challenge we are facing, and the pandemic made it much harder. Mm. In my case, it's been only a year and a half since I graduated from university, which means I just secured a job and began to earn my own money. Mm -hmm. So there hasn't been enough time for me to save and my income is not so high at the same time, so I'm not ready to be responsible for my life. Like myself, as achieving financial stability is getting harder to buy some time for their children who are beginners in society to settle down, many parents decide to economically support their children until the time is right. Exactly. And to find out whether giving or receiving cash from one's parents is only limited here to South Korea or if it's common in other parts of the world, we asked our global viewers to share their experience. If you take a look at the screen, you can find out what three of them had to say. Let's start with Tasmia. Tasmia said, my mother never accepts my gift so I always put cash in her bag secretly so that she would get surprised and she would never know that I had been giving her the money. That's really sweet. Now, Tira Spell says, I have not, but I do buy them very valuable items. For example, I'm buying a rose gold pendant for my mother for Mother's Day. Leon said, I give my parents about 10% of my monthly salary to help them out with household expenses. Also, I give them monetary gifts during special occasions like their birthdays or Mother's and Father's Day so they can treat themselves to something they like. So it's quite fascinating to find out that all of our viewers around the world are actually serving their parents. But to find out what the culture is like in Finland, we're going to include a fellow Gen Z in our talks. Stay tuned for a live interview. We're now going to include Nina Rosted in our talks. Nina is a Finnish Gen Z who will share her experience on how she usually celebrates Parents' Day. Welcome, Nina. Thank you uh, for having me today. All right, Nina, it's Parents' Day in Korea, which is why we're shedding light as to how we're expressing our gratitude towards our parents and how they're taking care of us even though we're young adults with a job. So in Finland, is it common for young adults in our generation to receive or give their parents cash gifts? And which of the two are more common? So I'd say it's more common to give your children money, mm -hmm. but regular allowances, like you were talking of, about giving and getting regular allowances here in Korea, is not as common in Finland once you turn 18, which is the age you become an adult. So after that, giving your children money, it's more about like getting big uh, appliances to your home or like something more expensive. So I say it's very different to Korea. I see. Now, Hezon, would you like to ask the second question? Okay, Nina, so then why do you think that's the case? I think it's because we're taught to be very independent from a young age. So um, even as teenagers, many students will have a summer job to earn their own money to use. And um, once you go off to college, you will either have a part-time job or even get a student loan and try to sustain your own living by yourself. Okay, Nina, so do you either want to receive or give cash gifts to your parents from now on? Well, I've been at the receiving end for quite some time mm -hmm. since I'm studying abroad. Uh, so from now on, I would like to give uh, gifts to my parents, but necessarily not maybe cash, but um, maybe buy them like a trip abroad or something like, nice like that. 
Mm. And Nina, if I may ask one last question, in light of Parents' Day, is there anything you would like to say to your parents or parents around the world? I think now is the time a lot of millennials and Gen Zers should realize how much they are doing for us because it's quite fascinating to hear that in Finland as well, it's the parents that are giving their children, though they are adults, allowances. So in light of that, anything that you would like to say to express your gratitude? Um, well, we don't celebrate uh, uh, Parents' Day in Finland, but we do have Mother's Day coming up soon. So I would like to especially uh, thank my mother for being a wonderful person and also my dad and for always helping me out and, you know, being there for me. Yeah, and that was a really heartfelt message right there. Thank you so much, Nina. It was a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you. And as Nina mentioned, it doesn't have to be cash gifts in order for us to be expressing our thankfulness towards our parents. But are there any other ways that you guys will try opting for in order to do so? Letter. Uh -huh. Double A letter. Handwritten letter. That's really nice. It doesn't have to be a long one or beautifully mm. elaborated like Shakespeare's piece. Just write down what's on your mind honestly and show your appreciation and admiration. Also, I have one question for you too. When was the last time you hugged your parents? Actually, <laughs> when was the last time for you? For me, though, it was quite mm. recent. During last weekend, we had oh. our uh, Parents' Day dinner, oh. and that's when I hugged my parents, both of them. Mm -hmm. And it was a really nice occasion because it's been like almost months since I've hugged them. Mm -hmm. What about you? Uh, years ago. <laughs> years ago. Okay. Sorry, mom. Sorry, mom. <laughs> You're the best son when it comes to giving oh, gifts, yes. but no so, touchy feely. Yeah. I Actually, uh, after hearing what uh, he hasn't said, mm. I should give uh, something more caring instead of money from yeah. now on. Yeah, yeah give them mm. a hug or a right. handshake or a little <laughs> peck on the cheek. Right. Mm. Yes, yeah, same here. I don't also don't remember when was the last time mm. I hugged them. But better late than never, guys. May 8th, Parents' Day is such a beautiful day to express your emotions to your parents. Mm -hmm. Hope everyone enjoys today full of love and happiness. So you're going to be writing them a handwritten letter, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, like Shakespeare. I think you should yeah. because it's also their 30th anniversary oh, and they're right. watching today. Yeah. So hopefully after the episode, Hyesung's parents could tell mm -hmm. us whether she actually did that. Now, what about you, Sangyeol? Yeah, so if you are living away from your parents, then mm. I recommend uh, giving a phone call would yeah. also uh, make their hearts move. Uh, and not only in Parents' Day, but you should also regularly call your parents mm -hmm. and talk, uh, talk with them and say what you're up to these days. Uh, because this is the universal fact. Your parents are just always concerned about what you do. And there's the famous saying that no matter how you get old, you will always be the baby of your mother. Yeah. Yeah, so today, if any of you who are watching this show, uh, grab a phone and call your mother and say hello. Yeah. <laughs> and so whether that's good news or bad news, they will really be happy to hear you. It's all the small things mm -hmm. that count. And I think on news generation, I think one of the light that we should be thinking about is we're about to be parents one day if we mm -hmm. want to get married and have kids. So hopefully this day is giving us a chance to really think beforehand mm -hmm. on what we want to do. And expressing gratitude doesn't have to be fancy. You can right. get, right. It doesn't have to be cash gifts mm -hmm. or even a letter. It could just be a phone call mm -hmm. or maybe a hug. I think that's a great or idea. Or just saying I love you. Or just saying <laughs> I love you. Very Expre simple. Exactly. Right. Expressing, your exp mm -hmm. expressing yourself yeah. comes down. Now, special thanks to Chung Hye Sun today and Im Sang Yeok. Mm -hmm. And today is actually my last day on News Generation. And having been able to cast a new light on our news channel, especially from the perspective of those in their 20s and 30s, has definitely been a rewarding challenge. So thank you for joining me and our panelists live every day from 9:30 to 10 a.m. Korea time. From tomorrow, my colleague Song Yoo Jin will be bringing you more topics young people are talking about. As for me, I would like to end off by saying thank you for tuning in every day and helping us make news for the new generation. We are News, news Generation. generation.